Tell me why can't I be your friend for life? Ooh, yes. You know that I'd always want to be by your side. Blessed, blessed my people, welcome back, you see me? You see, to the peeps, I have a special treat for all the music lovers. Yeah, people, all lovers of reggae music, I have a very special treat for you. Today, we're going to feature a very, very successful entertainer from Jamaica. And the artist that we're talking about today is none other than the Crown Prince of Reggae, Dennis Emmanuel Brown. We're gonna talk about his start, we're gonna talk about his rise to fame and we're gonna go in depth a bit into his journey in music, you understand people? And we're also gonna talk about his eventual downfall, we're gonna talk about his addiction to cocaine, you understand people, which eventually led to his downfall. So people, Dennis Emmanuel Brown was born on the 1st of February 1957 at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in Kingston, Jamaica. His father, Arthur, was a scriptwriter, actor, journalist, so you know, say, he might be talented in family, people with entertainment. He grew up in a large tenement yard between North Street and King Street in Kingston with his parents, three elder brothers and a sister. Although his mother died in the 1960s, he began his singing career at the age of just nine years old, while still at junior high school. With an end of term concert, the first time he performed in public, although he had been interested in music from he was a way younger age, but he did not build up the courage to perform his music in crowd, because Dennis Brown is a young man that would always be singing in his room and singing to himself, doing his rehearsal, because that was what he loved about entertainment. He wanted to be the best singer there is, but you know, he was just shy in the first. As a youngster, he was a fan of American balladeers, such as Brooke Benton, Sam Cooke and Dean Martin. He also cited Nat King Cole as one of his greatest early influences. He regularly hung around JJ's recording studio on Orange Street in the Rocksteady era and his relatives and neighbors would often throw brown pennies to hear him sing in their yard. Brown's first professional appearance came at the age of 11 years old when he visited Tit for Tat, a local West Kingston nightclub where his brother Basil was performing a comedy routine. And this was where Brown made a guest appearance with the club's resident group, the Fabulous Falcons, a group that included Cynthia Richards, David Scotty Scott and Noel Brown. On the strength of his performance, he was asked to join the group as a future vocalist. When the group performed at a JLP conference at National Arena, Brown sang two songs, Desmond Decker's Unity and Johnny Taylor's Ain't That Loving You. And after the audience showered the stage with money, Dennis Brown was able to buy his first suit with the proceeds. The band leader at that concert was Byron Lee, and Byron Lee also performed on the same bill. And he was so sufficiently impressed with Brown's performance that he booked him to perform on package shows which featured visiting US artists where he was billed as the boy wonder. As a young singer, Brown was influenced by older contemporaries such as Delroy Wilson, whom he later cited as the single greatest influence on his style of singing. You know, Errol Dunkley, John Holt, Ken Booth and Bob Andy were all entertainers whom Dennis Brown admired very, very much. Dennis Brown's first recording was an original song called Lips for Wine for producer Derek Ariat. But for some reason or the other, Derek Ariat did not release his song. Brown was not very pleased about that. So you know, Brown went on and recorded for Clement Cox One Dad's Studio One label. And his first session yielded the single No Man Is An Island, recorded when Brown was the age 12 years old and released in late 1969. The single received steadily increasingly airplay for almost a year before becoming a huge hit throughout Jamaica. Brown recorded over a dozen sessions for Cox One Dad, amounting to around 30 songs, and also worked as a backing singer on sessions by other artists, including providing harmonies along with Horace Andy and Larry Marshall for Alton Ellis' Sunday Coming album. Brown was advised by fellow Studio One artist Alton Ellis to learn guitar 
and that would help with his songwriting. And after some convincing, Cox One Dad bought the guitar for Dennis Brown. And he was taught the basic principles of using the guitar by Alton Ellis. So all the Studio One recordings that Brown did were collected on two albums, No Man Is An Island and If I Follow My Art, the title track penned by Alton Ellis. Although Brown had left Studio One before either was released, he went on to record for several producers, including Light Daly, for whom he did two songs titled Baby Don't Do It and Things in Life, respectively. He also recorded for Prince Buster, One Day Soon and If They Had The World. And he also recorded for Phil Pratt, songs titled Black Magic Woman, Let Love In and What About The Half. So after this run of recording, Ron returned to working with Derek Ariat, recording a string of popular singles including Chiloet, Concentration, He Can Spell and Musical Heat Wave with the pick of these tracks collected on Super Reggae and Soul its album in 1973. Brown also recorded for Vincent Randy Chin, Cheetah, Dennis Al Capone, I was lonely and Herman Chin Lai, it's too late and sang my mother used to sing and people a very very important point to note during all of this time with all these hits and success Brown was still in school yeah people Brown was still a teenager so now people we're gonna talk a bit about Brown's international success so in 1972 Brown began an association that would result in his breakthrough as an internationally successful artist. He was asked by Joe Gibbs to record an album for him and one of the tracks recorded as a result of the album was titled Money In My Pocket and this song was a hit with UK reggae audiences and quickly became a favorite of his live performances. This original version of Money In My Pocket was in fact produced by Winston Niney Oldness on behalf of Gibbs with musical backing from Soul Syndicate and in that same year Brown performed as part of a Christmas morning showcase in Toronto along with Delroy Wilson, Scotty, Errol Dunkley and the Fabulous Flames where he was billed as the boy wonder of Jamaica and was considered the star of the show in a local newspaper review. The song's popularity in the UK established with the release of a DJ version as so we stay money in a hand credited to Big Youth and Dennis Brown, which outsold the original single and topped the Jamaica single chart. Brown and Oles became close, even sharing a house in Pembroke Hall. Brown followed this with another collaboration with Oles, a song titled Westbound Train, which was the biggest Jamaican hit of summer 1973. And Brown's star status was confirmed when he was voted Jamaica's top male vocalist by a poll Swing Magazine the same year. Brown followed this success with Cassandra and No More Will I Roam and tracks such as Africa and Love Ja displaying Brown's Rastafari beliefs. His song became staples on London's sound systems scene. And people, as with a lot of the artists from back in them days, like Garnet Silk, Bob Marley, the whole of them artists, even Jimmy Cliff, they overworked themselves. So in 1973, Brown was hospitalized due to fatigue caused by overwork. At the time, rumors spread that he only had one lung and had only a week to live or had contracted tuberculosis. He was advised to take an extended break from performing and concentrated instead on his college studies. Dennis Brown made his return to music and toured the United Kingdom for the first time in late summer 1974 as part of a Jamaican showcase along with Cynthia Richards, Al Brown, Sharon Forrester and the Metals, after which he was invited to stay for further dates, where he was backed by the Timorans, staying in the UK for another three months. While in the UK, he recorded for the first time since his hospitalization, working with his producer, Sidney Crooks, and again backed by the Simarans. While Brown was in the UK, Gibbs released an album collecting recordings Brown made earlier in Jamaica, released as the Best of Dennis Brown. And Brown's first single to get a proper UK release was issued on the Syndra label, song titled No More Will I Roam. Dennis Brown returned to Jamaica for Christmas, but six weeks later, 
he was back in the UK now with Olness as his business manager to negotiate a record deal with Trojan Records. The first Brown album to be released as a result being just Dennis, although the pair would be left out of pocket after Trojan's collapse and subsequent buyout by Saga Records. On their return to Jamaica, Brown and Olness resumed recording in earnest with tracks for now new album including So Long Rastafari, Boasting and Open the Gate. During 1975, Brown has also recorded one half sessions for Sonia Patinja, a song titled If You Leave Me, and Bonnie Lee, a song titled So Much Pain, a duet with Johnny Clark, and the first recordings began to appear on Brown's new DEB music label. So in the wake of the Trojan collapse, Brown and Olness arranged a deal with local independent label owners Castro Brown, Oran Marfius Records and Larry Lawrence of Ethnic Fight to distribute their releases in the UK. Brown saw the UK as the most important market to target and performed for five consecutive nights at the Georgian Club in Croydon to raise funds to start his new DEB music label that is Dennis Emmanuel Brown music label with Castro Brown. In early 1976, Castro secured a deal with Radio London disc jockey Charlie Gillett for Mafios and hence DEB output to be issued through the letters Oval Records, which had a distribution deal with Virgin Records. But after a dispute over Castro's separate supply of these records to the London record shops, the deal was eventually scrapped and the early DEB releases suffered from a lack of promotion. So later that year, Brown voiced two tracks at Lee Scratch Perry's Black Ark Studio. These songs were titled Take a Trip to Zion and the other Wolf and Leopards. The latter of which was a hit in Jamaica and would prove to be one of Brown's most popular songs with lyrics criticizing those criminals who rode the Natty Dread bandwagon. Brown also confirmed in an interview with Black Echoes that he had parted company with Olness, stating, I was going along with one man's idea for too long. Now he was trying to find a new beat at all times, which was disconcerting, so I hadn't been working with my true abilities. Now I know that I can produce myself. So Dennis Brown recommenced working with Joe Gibbs with an arrangement that in return for studio time for his own productions, Brown would allow Gibbs to use any rhythm recorded in the process. The first album from his arrangement in 1977 release, Visions of Dennis Brown, gave him his biggest success up to that point, blending conscious themes and love songs and confirming Brown's transformation from child star to grown-up artist. The biblical themed sleeve and portrait of El Selassie and the jacket back complemented the root reggae tracks on the album including repatriation, Jack and do it, milk and honey you understand? After being released, the album immediately entered the Black Echoes chart and stayed there well into the following year. Although it was only available in the UK as a premium price import, Visions was voted Reggae Album of the Year by Melody Maker writers and was given the same award by readers of Black Echoes. A reissued Wolf and Leopard single and the eventual album release of the same name also sold well in the UK, both topping the Black Echoes chart. Dennis Brown toured the UK in the fall of 1977 with Big Youth and he described the tour like this. He said, it's like I was appointed to deliver certain message and now is the time to deliver them. He had also begun producing recordings by his protege, Junior Delgado. In 1978, Dennis Brown moved to live in London and set up a premises in Battersea Rise near Clapham Junction to relaunch the DEB music label with Castro Brown, with artists featured on the label including Juna Delgado, Bob Andy, Lennox Brown and later Gregory Isaac. Brown had further successes for himself with a disco mix of How Could I Leave You, a version of Shark's Rocksteady Standard, How Could I Live? with accompanying toast by Prince Mohammed. In 1978, Brown flew to Jamaica where he was booked at the last minute to perform on the One Love Peace concert at the National Arena, backed by Light Parks, We The People Band. Vision of Dennis Brown was given a wider distribution via a deal between Lightning Records and WEA, resulting in the album topping the UK reggae album chart in September 1978. And it remained at the top of the charts 
for just under five months. August 1978, Brown returned to the UK, bringing Junior Delgado with him, and DEB Music released a series of singles, although they sold moderately compared to the label's earlier success. But in the same month, Brown's breakthrough single was the first released. Initially released as a disco mix featuring a new version of Money In My Pocket and the DJ version, Cool Runnings by Prince Mohammed, which became unavailable for a time after quickly selling out its first pressing. This single gave Brown its first UK top 40 hit and reaching number 14 in the following year and becoming one of the biggest international hits in Jamaica's history. After crossing over first into soul clubs and then rock clubs, this success led to Brown featuring on the cover of NME in February 1979. Brown's next two albums were released as the DEB. So Long Rastafari and Joseph Coat of Many Colors. Although the label was closed down in 1979, after which Brown again started to work with Jamaica's top producers and singing more hit music. As well as he continued self-productions with singles such as The Little Village and Do I Worry in 1981. So with continuing commercial success, Brown signed an international deal with a and m records 1981 and now based permanently in the uk his first album released for the label was gibbs produced foul play which while not wholly a success included the roots track the existence of ja and the world is troubled this was followed in 1982 by love has found its way a gibbs brown willie linda productions that blended lovers with a more pop sound and again was not a great success and was his final album with the label while dennis brown's association with a and m had taken him in a more commercial pop direction kingston music scene had shifted towards the new dancehall era and brown enthusiastically adapted to the new sound recording for some of the genre's major producers in including Prince Jammy and Goosey Clark. In the early 1980s, he also started a new label, Evans Special, dedicated to his wife. In 1984, he collaborated with Gregory Isaac on the album Two Bad Superstars Meet and the hit single Let Off Something, which was a hit for both artists, you know what I mean? Was recorded with Sly and Robbie and Jammy, which was followed by a second album featuring the two stars, Judge Not, in 1985. Brown released a huge amount of work through the 80s, including the 1986 Jammy produced album The Exit. But his biggest success of the decade came in 1989 with the Goosey Clark produced duet with Isaac, Big All Around, and the album Unchallenged. He continued to record prolifically in the 1990s, notably on the Three Against War album in 1995 with Beanie Man and Tristan Palmer and an album's produced Mikey Bennett and his profile in the United States was raised by a series of album releases and Ross records in the late 1990s he was managed by Tommy Cohen who contrasted Brown to Bob Marley who he had also managed stating that Bob Marley was a serious businessman I don't think Dennis was as serious when it come to, to investment Dennis was like a community person he would earn money and in one hour he would give it all away. In 1994, Brown's album Light My Fire was nominated for Grammy Award, as was the last album recorded by Brown, Let Me Be the One, in 2001. You know, Brown never win a Grammy. And that is similar to Bob Marley and Maxi Priest, two other great, great reggae entertainers. Now, people, we're gonna talk about Dennis Brown's deteriorating health condition, which eventually led to him dying at a fairly young age. In the late 1990s, Brown's health began to deteriorate. He had developed respiratory issues, probably escalated by a long-standing problem with drug addiction that he had. Yes, people, Dennis Brown was addicted to cocaine, as also he was addicted to smoking cigarettes and him smoke weed. All these issues led to him being taken ill in May 1999 after completing a tour in Brazil with other reggae singers where he was diagnosed with pneumonia 
after returning to Kingston, Jamaica on the evening of the 30th June 1999. He was rushed to Kingston University Hospital after suffering cardiac arrest. And for those persons who might not know what is meant by cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest simply means heart attack. Brown died one day after being in the hospital. An autopsy was done on his body and the official cause of his death was from a collapsed lung. Dennis Brown was given a state funeral on July the 17th, 1999 in Kingston. You know what back then, then Prime Minister P.J. Patterson as also the opposition leader Edward Siaga was in attendance at the funeral and they both gave speeches. The Crown Prince of Reggae after such a successful career had passed away. You understand people, he was buried at the National Eros Park in Kingston. People, just a thought, you know what I mean? You see, it is a very challenging situation to know that you are in a job where you can never be recognized as the top person, you understand? And when you look at Dennis Brown's role in reggae music, you know what I mean? Dennis Brown did a lot for reggae music, a very talented entertainer from a very young age. Dennis Brown had gone good. And to know that he could never be seen as a king of reggae music, that must have had some form of effect on Dennis Brown mentally. You get me as a people, knowing that maybe you put in a little bit more work than Bob Marley, you get me? And to know that you will never be able to be the king of reggae, that is a sad situation. That could have been one of the reasons why Dennis Brown turned to drugs. And listen people, no kingdom at all in the world, not only have one king alone, you understand? You can have a reigning king, you know what I mean? You can have past king. So you can have kings of reggae. And I think that Dennis Brown and there are a lot more artists out there who can be who, who can also be seen as kings of reggae music. You understand people? So Dennis Brown, in my opinion, is a king of reggae music because he's going to the world and he fight for reggae music. You understand people? But anyways, peeps. That was my take on the whole situation. You can like, you can share, subscribe. Until next time, peace. We're working Tell on the bench. Work Dennis Brown! Dennis Brown! Dennis Brown! He rules the crown! Red the royal to Dennis Brown inside to get a splash. Break down, Dennis Brown. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Hold on. Tell me why can't I be your friend for life? Ooh, yes. You know that I don't always want to be. By your side, you say, Give me joy and happiness, and I feel good all over. Joy and happiness, and I feel like grips on the globe. All I ever wanted to do just to be here with you. Ooh, yes. When all the riches and lots of weeds down the door, ooh, yes. I'm saying that this is no disrespect because I'm falling in love with you. Yeah, there's no disrespect. What's come over you? Why can't I be your friend? You know that I always want to be by your side Ooh, yes. By your side well, well, By your side
flash my gun no more. Hold on my camera. I'm going to buy 45. Let your be praised while I pray for my blessings to rise. Let's up with the mercy, just know The belly full, but they're starving Have a lot of things you want to Love days can never be great Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no Here I go, with love is my picture so they could make the magic of my life All the days of my life And you know I have no wish to be with no evil man For them of the days Who be with by the father's name Never to feel yet We 